So data processing agreement is an agreement between a controller and a processor. It regulates any personal data processing conducted for business purposes. Their processor to processor agreements as well. So data processing agreement is primarily between a controller and a processor because it talks about processing of data and the controller tells the processor that why and how a data can be processed. And that's how you have a DPA. There are also processor to processor agreements. We have discussed that there can be n number of processors for a work and a processor can further hire a sub processor. So there'll be data processing agreements between processors also. There are certain DPAs which are based, which cannot be termed as DPAs between controller and controller. But the controllers do not talk about processing of data, right? They decide on how the data is being processed in their own individual capacities. They both have the power of uh, deciding how and why of data. Many organizations put it under a DPA, but then it is not really a DPA. It will be a term of a contract, any any type of an agreement, but in working ways, it's called a DPA in many cases, but it is not a processing agreement. It's just an agreement between the two controllers that how they're going to use data and how they're going to process in their individual capacity. So there's not one person directing the other on how and why a data has to be processed. But you'll find a lot of controller to control agreements also. And the good part about controller to controller agreements is that as a controller, you don't don't have to really look into the working of those documents because the other party is also a controller and they have to deal with all the obligations you are responsible for. But then there is data controller to data processor agreement. Those are the most common. And then there is processor to processor agreements. They are the third most common agreements there. Second most, sorry. So what does a data processing agreement include? It includes any operation in which data is collected, translated, communicated, or classified to produce meaning in full information. That is processing and anything you know any of this activity if it takes place within an organization it leads to processing and then for that you need to have a data processing agreement so what are the basics of a dpa so yeah so what are the basics of a dpa first is that why do we need a dpa for most important is gdpr compliance you cannot transfer data if you don't have a data processing agreement within european union if it is outside european union you need standard contraction clauses so DPA is for within an European Union, EU and EEA. That is only when the data is within EU and EEA, it's being processed there, it's being stored there. Then that time you need a DPA. But if the data goes outside European Union or European Economic Area, EEA, then you need an SC. A DPA would not suffice in that case. And the DPA is really important to ensure GDPR compliance because it is the only mechanism. When I say DPA, please try and understand that when data is transferred outside, it is SCC. DPA is the only mechanism to transfer data and also to ensure that the obligations on controllers and processors are there. So a DPA is a legally binding contract that states the rights and obligations of each party concerning the protection of personal data. So it specifies the obligations of a controller, it specifies the obligations of a processor and also what kind of damages be done or be demanded or what is the processor liable for or what are the responsible areas of a processor in this case. For example, if your business owner is subject to GDPR, it is in your interest to have a DPA because first of all, when there's a compliance and you're sharing data or you're processing data, then you have to say that I have a DPA in place and it is by the virtue of this DPA that I am processing and sharing data. Then you meet the GDPR compliance and the DPA also gives you assurance that the data processor you're using is qualified and capable. Because when you make a DPA, you ask for a lot of information from your processor. And that makes you believe that the processor has enough measures to keep the data safe or the processor knows that there is something called a DPA and I need to sign it and these are the questions in there and I, I really need to get it done if I want to process personal data within EU or EEA. Also remember that a DPA does not stand alone. It is an attachment to the contract. So you will have to have a service agreement. You just cannot have a data processing agreement in the absence of a main contract contract or a main agreement. As a company, if a company is providing services, you need to have a service agreement signed and the DPA would be an attachment to it. It's generally one of the annexures to the main contract. Like annexure one can be a data processing agreement, annexure two can be a processing specification form. If the data is within EU and outside EU, annexure three can be a standard contractual clause or any other old agreements or receipts or something, finance, anything. But a DPA cannot, does not stand alone. You need to have a service 
service agreement and the dps part of that service agreement